In today's video, we're checking out the all new Rhino Storm Smart Shunt. As we get this out of the box, you'll have a manual. You'll also have a couple leads to hook up multiple and different types of battery configurations, a temperature sensor, and the shunt itself. Coming in at an introductory price of only $59, this will actually be a direct competitor to the Victron shunt, which is $130, and if you take a look at it, for the most part, they kind of look the same. So we're going to get this hooked up and go over some of the features real quick, and also see how well the Bluetooth works, which goes right to your phone so you can see all the information and more. So we're going to need ourselves a battery, we'll also take the shunt, we'll get ourselves a negative cable, and a couple other items to get this hooked up. These are pretty straightforward to install. You can see to battery minus, so we take this one cable and we'll hook it up to the negative side on the battery, and then we'll hook it up to the minus side that's on the shunt. And that'll be the only cable that'll go on this side of the shunt, so this part is pretty straightforward. We'll go ahead and tighten our connections, and then we can work on the other side of the shunt. Now this is where all your loads are gonna be hooked up to, like a load distribution panel. That way the shunt can keep track of the loads that go through it. So we're gonna hook up two wires. This black wire is gonna be from a solar charge controller and the bigger wire is gonna be to an inverter so we can see what it looks like with power coming in and also power going out as we use the power through the inverter, but power comes in through the solar charge controller so we can keep track of what's coming in and also the power going out. Now we do have one more wire to hook up and this is going to be our red positive cable and this is what's going to give power to the unit so it can actually power up and send us that Bluetooth signal and there's only a couple spots for it to go either in VBAT1 or VBAT2 and this is also where you'll hook up your temperature sensor connection if you want to know the temperature of your battery. So we have three red wires to hook up and we have a large red cable that's going to be from the inverter. Then we have the smaller red wire which comes from the shunt and then also this wire which is going to be from our solar charge controller so we can be charging the battery at the same time while we're actually using it. We'll go ahead and tighten our connections and then we can go ahead and take a look at the shunt. As you take a look at it you can see the blue light is now on so it's ready to be powered up. So now you have to download the app at the App Store, whether you have an iPhone or an Android. And I've already downloaded this once, but I'm going to go ahead and go through this setup again. And it'll give you a little password that you'll have to go ahead and enter, which the temporary is just 123456. And then as you go ahead and put in your password, it should go ahead and come up with a whole bunch of information and away it goes. And now it shows that your battery is fully charged, which you do want to have your battery fully charged before you hook this up and go through all the setup procedures. But it'll show you your voltage, current, run times, and more. And as you go through battery settings, this is where you can put the type of battery you have, how many amp hours, your fully state of charge, and other information. So you'll want to know the battery type and the info of that battery. Now we can go ahead and go back and take a look at some info. So right now we have our shunt right here, and then it's connected up to the battery and then I also have the solar charge controller over there which we'll plug that in a second and a secondary meter so we can see what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and plug in the solar now and as you take a look at the power I have about 64 watts coming in and then about 4.8 amps. As we take a look at this meter it says 4.5 amps 63 watts but it is a little cloudy so it's going to be varied. Now when it comes to solar charge controllers, this is just an older PWM, but I really recommend the MPPTs because they just are that much better. We're going to go ahead and do a little test. I'm going to use this hair dryer and put it into the fan only mode, which will be about 125 watts, give or take. As we look at the phone, we can go ahead and now take a look at the app and it'll show us some information like how much current is being drawn, the amount of power or watts, and also estimated run times as well. And sorry about the glare, but you can see there time remaining other information like temperature which this one does come with a temp sensor unlike the Victron model but as we take a look at other info we'll go ahead and plug in the solar charge controller and now that we have power coming in this will help increase our run times and also the amount of draw that's coming off the battery because the solar is help charging it at the same time but the numbers are definitely fluctuating quite a bit because outside it's partly cloudy so earlier I had about 75 to 80 watts then it dropped to 60 and now as you can see we're only getting about 30 watts and about 2.2 amps but when you have a day that's been pretty much mostly to partly cloudy you're going to have a lot of erratic numbers but we're going to go ahead and now test out the Bluetooth range and see how well this does because that was one of the biggest complaints with the Victron one is at 20 to 30 feet it didn't work at all. Okay, so I'm out here by my RV trailer and currently at this spot about 40 feet, give or take. And as you can see, it's still working so far and it is inside the garage behind a door. And so far, all the numbers are moving. So it looks like I'm still getting a good signal, which so far so good. So I'm going to go ahead and go back another 15, maybe 20 feet. We'll get to about 60 and we'll see if it still works all the way back here. So now as we take a look, it's still on currently. And this is about 60 feet, a little bit. Oh, it just shut off. Okay, we'll see if it regains a signal. 
And obviously with the RV trailer in the way and behind a closed door back there, well, it's open just a little bit, but not coming back yet. Oh, there it goes. We'll see if we can get it to get a signal. And not quite. So I'm at the back edge of my trailer now, so about 55 feet, and I'm getting a signal again, no problem. And of course, that's all the way behind the door and a bunch of other stuff. But if you guys have had the Victron shunt or you're looking for one, what does this option look like to you guys? Let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think. I hope you guys liked the quick video, and until then, I hope to see you next time.